First, a pilot eye view of the 1955 Farnborough Show, with the giant wings of Britain's big bombers dominating the scene. This was the 16th display by the Society of British Aircraft Constructors, and as always, it was a display that people from all over the world wanted to see. In the course of Farnborough Week, they came in their hundreds of thousands from scores of countries. Interest in British aircraft construction seemed to be keener than ever, but that's not surprising in view of the forward policy of British designers. Among distinguished visitors to the display was America's General Grunter, Supreme Commander Allied Powers in Europe. The first Sea Lord, Admiral Lord Mountbatten. Prince Bernhardt of the Netherlands, himself an expert pilot, had flown over. The Italian Foreign Minister was another of many important overseas visitors. And here's Mrs. Pandit, India's High Commissioner. Everyone who went to the show certainly found plenty to see and examine. The assembly of aircraft was comprehensive, from the supersonic experimental to the brand new utility. Military aircraft were prominent with emphasis on attack. All shapes and sizes were on view, from a new look in fighters to the latest V-bomber. Yes, details of aerodynamic design provided a fascinating study at the static display. One of the most easily spotted of the aircraft being the Victor with its lofty tail unit. Then, streaking out of the clouds, the comet opens the fly past. Development work on this aircraft is leading to the new Comet 4. Powered by four Rolls-Royce Avon jets, this aircraft will fly from London to Johannesburg, Valcaro and Nairobi in just over 15 hours. Scottish Aviation's twin pioneer can take off in less than a hundred yards. This new version of the pioneer is a 14 to 16 seater transport with a speed range of 50 to 180 miles an hour. It's capable of one-man operation, but has provision for a second crew member and flies stage distances of up to 500 miles. The Twin Pioneer shows its extreme handiness by its short, slow-speed landing. The brilliant success of the Vickers Viscount is well known. This magnificent aircraft opened the world's first scheduled turboprop airliner service. Nearly 250 have been ordered by 28 different operators in Britain and overseas. The Bristol Britannia made a most impressive showing at Farnborough. Powered by four Proteus turboprop engines, the Britannia 100 is designed to carry 90 passengers over Commonwealth routes. A later version will fly from London to New York non-stop. Now, in full production, it should have a great future. The Hanley Page Herald is a newcomer to Farnborough. It's a 36 to 44 seater medium range transport with a cruising speed of 200 knots. 29 have already been ordered by three operators, one of which is Queensland Airlines. Helicopters showing their paces included the Bristol Type 173. This is a twin rotor tandem engaged in flight research. Forward or backwards, it makes no difference to the 173. Ferry's new Ultra Light is designed as an army spotter or for runabout duties. As in the case of the Ultra Light, so in another new Ferry product, the Jet Gyrodyne, a research helicopter, the rotor is driven by compressed air jets at the blade tips. In cruising flight, most of the Gyrodyne's power is transferred to two propellers on the stub wings. The Saunders Row Skeeter 6 is a two-seater light helicopter designed for civil use. It's powered by a Gypsy Major engine and has a maximum speed of 100 miles an hour. Helicopters, of course, are coming more and more into the picture. Sir Anthony Eden adopted this most direct and convenient form of transport when he came to inspect the Farnborough Show. 
The Prime Minister was starting a tour of service establishments and he made a point of getting plenty of close-ups here. Presently, putting on a flying suit, the Premier prepared for a trip in an Avro Vulcan. This aircraft is the world's first Delta Wing four-jet bomber. It's due to enter squadron service in RAF Bomber Command next year. During his flight, Sir Anthony himself handled the controls and is reported to have been greatly impressed by this great and formidable machine. The Vulcan has flown at over 50,000 feet near the speed of sound. Avro test pilot Roland Falk, flying over Farnborough, put the giant bomber into a perfect roll as if it were a fighter. A spectacular achievement and a spectacular machine. The Avro Shackleton MR3 flew over with three of her four engines feathered. Short Seamews, two-seater light anti-submarine aircraft flew past in formation. And here, installed under an Ashton, is the Rolls-Royce Conway bypass engine, a major advance in gas turbine technology. Now the de Havilland Jaren claimed to be the most powerful type-tested engine yet announced, mounted experimentally in the Sperry. One of Britain's already famous V-bombers is the Hanley Page Victor in super-priority production. Another is the Vickers Valiant. These long-range high-speed bombers in service with the RAF have already set a number of records. Singapore to Darwin at an average speed of 518 miles an hour. And London to Baghdad at over 523. The Avro CF-100 is a two-seater long-range all-weather fighter. It was designed and built in Canada and is in service with the RCAF for Arctic defense. Here's some attractive evidence of how the CF-100 handles. Spectators presently had a particular thrill when they saw the English Electric P-1, the first British aircraft to exceed the speed of sound in level flight. Now, squadron leader Tennant prepares to take up the Folland Nat-1, a development of the Midge. This lightweight supersonic fighter makes two notable claims. That it is only about one third of the weight of a conventional fighter and that it can be produced in about one fifth of the time. The British Ministry of Supply has ordered a number of Nats for development flying. An increasingly common practice with high-speed aircraft is followed by the Nat, the use of a parachute brake when landing. The Ferry Delta II has an elongated nose which can be lowered to give the pilot a good view forward. In this case it's being raised and the pilot takes off with the nose in normal position. The Delta II is yet another research aircraft probing into the future. It's capable of supersonic speed in level flight and has exceptionally thin wings. impressions of its flying demonstration seem to indicate that it will do anything demanded of it.
coming in to land, the nose is lowered. And once again, parachutes slow down the landing run. Now another Delta, the Gloucester Javelin. This long-range all-weather radar-equipped fighter is designed to carry a most advanced electronic and guided weapon system. Powered by two Armstrong Sidley Sapphire jets, the Javelin is supersonic. Finally, to round off this great show, the Hawker Hunter. The Hunter F-4 can be equipped with plastic drop tanks, 100-gallon tanks that don't affect the aircraft's handling qualities. It also has special attachments for underwing weapons. The two-seater trainer is a new version. On order for the RAF, it's undergoing intensive development. Hunters have already completed their first year of squadron service with the RAF. Meanwhile, Hunter export orders have passed the 120 million pound mark, surely a great tribute to its quality. Undoubtedly, the flying display by these British fighters thrilled all who were watching. The formation roaring overhead was certainly a highlight of this Farnborough flypast. <laughs> 